Van in Neuven. Let me start by, uh, you know, asking uh, Mr. Deepak Gupta from MNRE. He made a really uh, nice sort of uh, speech early in the morning um, and made certain observations on both where the industry is headed and uh, what uh, is being done from the government's perspective on that. Uh, but sir, really, uh, one of the key questions is uh, looking at the targets, the National Action Plan on Climate Change essentially looked at an indicative target of 15% uh, power purchase by the whole of the country um, in the next 10 years or so. Uh, are, do you think we are on track to sort of uh, achieve that uh, number? I don't think we can achieve that number. Uh, that number has come as a kind of ideal that you should move towards. But please remember that we are uh, progressing with renewable energy, as I said, at a time when, you know, every possible effort is being made to maximize the other power. So when both are growing very fast simultaneously, then for me to double my share, I think it's a very difficult task. But uh, it doesn't matter if it's 9% or 10%, and that's a more realistic objective. But of course, the percentages will develop, depend upon how that grows. So it's better, I think, to talk in, the, uh, in terms of capacity that we can install and how much more we can do so in different sectors. I think that's the better way to do it. Kishore, as a, uh, as a big conglomerate like GE, uh, everybody knows GE's presence in India, you know, has been there for a long time uh, and made substantial contribution to the power sector. How does clean energy fit into this whole strategy for GE Energy in India? Um, and how do you think it would grow as a business in the near future? You know, when you look at uh, GE, one of the major uh, themes we have is called as eco-imagination. It is about imagining about eco-friendly products across our entire portfolio. And wind was one of the first ones back in 2001, we started doing the wind business. We've been doing research in the solar segment. We used to have a hydro business that uh, we do not participate in anymore. Right? But overall, wind and solar globally are extremely big businesses for us. Eco-imagination is an initiative of GE that is here to stay. And we have also increased our presence in this country tremendously over the last five years. Uh, Dr. Arya, you have been in the solar industry for a long time. and. Uh, I think Moser Bear's initiatives on the solar PV space came much before uh, the advent of the solar mission in the country per se. Um, what was the logic behind uh, diversifying into that business and uh, what are the sort of uh, opportunities we are looking at in India in terms of market potential and size? Moser Bear was and still is a high tech, high volume manufacturer. We make over 4 billion optical media discs. So for us to get into something that's large volume, technology driven, uh, electronic related, semiconductor process related uh, manufacturing was a natural for us to go. And that's how solar came about. Uh, instead of making a circular disc with a donut hole in it, which is a, a CD or a DVD, we make a rectangular or square wafer, but it goes through similar process steps. So Mozabir had the technical know-how as well as the depth in technology processing. We are probably the largest clean room in the country. Uh, Pankaj, from a private equity perspective, uh, you would obviously be talking to a lot of uh, project developers on the power generation side. Uh, you would also, I think, would be in discussions with a few manufacturers. Is there a way of looking at it in terms of whether manufacturing currently looks more appealing than project development? or other services, how would you sort of uh, go about that when looking at an investment proposal? Uh, if you're looking at a venture capital uh, firm, they would largely be investing in manufacturing kind of businesses, new innovative solar technologies that they hope would be game changers and would have a, a, you know, a step function reduction in the cost. Uh, what you see in India though is uh, the other aspect of it where there are uh, large funds that would invest, let's say, sums of uh, first of 20, 25 million dollars, uh, would be relatively satisfied with infrastructure-like returns, which are generally low teens, uh, and there is relatively little risk. There is risk of execution, perhaps, uh, but the technology risk isn't there. It's proven elsewhere, and those are the kind of investments you see happening in India. Um, Craig, you have heard a few interesting perspectives, and everybody looks to be optimistic. Um, and in terms of uh, capital deployment, 
obviously we have heard a lot of surveys and a lot of uh, things in the press which say India looks like a fascinating destination. Mm -hmm. But are there sort of other alternative destinations that uh, foreign investors are looking at which could compete you know, sort of strongly with India in terms of uh, capital deployment in the near future? Right. I, I don't think it's necessarily a zero-sum game. So if other, other countries start to provide nice policy incentives for investment, it means that, oh, India is going to lose interest. I don't think that's going to happen. I think you'll have continued strong interest here. You'll have continued strong interest in, in Italy and other markets that, ha that have these uh, attractive incentives. And I think, uh, you know, it's never been the problem that there's too little capital. It's always been, from my perspective, it's the projects. So if you have a project environment that's attractive, you're going to find the capital. Ravi, my first question to you, uh, given what we have heard, um, Aston Field is a sort of new and emerging uh, company in the IPP space on the solar side. Uh, what is that that you know new and emerging companies bring to the table, uh, which probably you know some of the old uh, groups within the country uh, or old players within the country don't have? So what's what's? I, I'm not asking you to make a sales pitch here, but what's the USP that uh, this market? you know, uh, in this market you can bring in? I want to address to this audience, of course, Mr. Gupta. We have not recognized the fact what is the value of energy security in India. Government of India has to decide someday over conventional fuel and put an index. Once you do that, because this is a fuel, the second biggest concern in India is sustainable development across villages. You have microgrids, but how do you do microgrids? Unless you have almost about two or three gigawatts trans across India, having 5 to 20 megawatt of solar plants across the country in most deserted places where nobody would go because land is only cheap at those areas which is not cultivated. That's why Rajasthan and Gujarat are at the forefront which were never for industry. Uh, what new developers bring is new technologies. People are afraid to come into Indian market because it has been a balloon which they see, yes, you are talking of such big gigawatts till last year we were a couple of kilowatts and now we talk of 60 gigawatt mindset. But with us piggy banking, those people come up and they want to expand. They even want to manufacture certain products, certain technologies. So you have a lot of developers coming in, piggy banking, even venture capitalists who don't want to look in India, but they want to see really is utility going to pay is a big question. So once certain models become successful, I'm sure India will be market and this target, what we speak, is possible. Another round of applause, final applause for all our panelists today. Thank you so much.